You've been waiting all year, and the moment is finally here. It's time to shop Bowl & Branch's biggest sale and start getting your best sleep in the world's softest sheets. Right now, you can get 25% off the organic cotton sheets loved by millions of sleepers. They feel breathable, luxuriously soft, and get even softer with every wash. So hurry to BowlAndBranch.com for 25% off everything with free shipping and extended returns. Shop today at B-O-L-L and Branch.com. Exclusions apply. See site for details. Let's face it, most people aren't making massive turkey feasts on the regular. And after 364 days of not thinking about it, it can be hard to get that bird just right. That's where Instacart, the holiday rescue app, comes in. From getting all the ingredients to prep a full seasonal spread to getting last-minute swaps in a turkey emergency, Instacart has everything a holiday host needs to save face and save dinner. And right now, if you download Instacart, you'll get free delivery on your first three orders and delivery in as fast as one hour. Offer valid for a limited time. $10 minimum per order. Additional term supply. Stand by for an urgent bulletin. Showtime. Are you ready? I'm ready. Are you ready? Ready. ready? This is the Bob and Jeff Show, starring Bob Lutz. Cleveland has no hitters. A bunch of Punch and Judy hitters is what we call them in our day. You punch and then you you run like Judy. I say wimby, wamby, wambly. Jeff Lutz. Yeah, so we're sexist now. That's cool. We like it. 97.5 in 1240 KFH. It's awesome, baby. All right, we are back. The Bob and Jeff Show, KFH Radio. Bob Lutz, Jeff Lutz. We are joined by Colby Rogers, Wichita State guard, who is off to a fantastic start through six games. Colby, hello. Welcome. Hey, how you doing? So uh, all we heard last year is you were uh, painfully, and I'm sure it was a challenge to sit out the season as you waited to become eligible. Uh, all we heard was, man, wait till you see this guy. He's a scorer. And by golly, you're a scorer. 17.8 points per game so far. Uh, how difficult was it to kind of wait your turn and uh, to be given this opportunity and, and uh, sit and watch a team play last year? Yeah, um, at first it was, you know, mentally difficult just, you know, having to be there, participate and practice and, you know, weights and, work out and then just having to sit on the sideline. But, you know, I didn't want to, you know, let my – whatever my situation was kind of, you know, be a negative impact on the team. So I just focused on, you know, trying to be a good teammate, um, spread positivity, and just continue to work and just use that year to prepare for this year. Um, so that was my only – that was my goal and that was my mindset, you know, after a couple months of just getting used to having to really sit out. So – you got to see all the games last year, of course, and you got to be involved in practice, practice with the team. What's the biggest difference between last year and this year in those two areas, the way you practice and the way you play? Um, I would say, you know, practice has been more, um, you know, attention to detail. Uh, coach Mills is a very um, analytical driven coach. Um, obviously, you know, he's, he doesn't weigh too much into it, you know, but, he does use numbers. He does track everything. He does stat everything. Um, and he has, you know, different spots on the floor that we want to guard a guy in this spot a certain way. You know, for our offense, we want to, you know, cut this way or cut that way. Um, so his, his attention to detail is, um, you know, at, at a higher level. Um, but he also shows us that it translates to, you know, the professional world as well. So you have to just kind of, you know, buy in if you want to play, you know, as professional. Um, and I would say, too, the our practices are just, you know, a little more intense. You know, he's, um, you know, the standards are standards, what he always says. Uh, so that kind of resonates with us. And then in the game, you know, he allows us to play with pace and play with freedom, but also, you know, within the structure that he's placed for us. Um, so, I mean, I, I'm happy with it. Um, obviously, you know, I started off well. Um, I continue to get better and stuff like that, but it's been fun. Colby Rogers with us, Wichita State guard, averaging, as I said, 17.8 points per game, shooting the ball well. I wanted to ask you about one of your teammates because we had Xavier Bell on the show a few weeks ago before the season started, and he was determined to show uh, the fans and, and anybody else who watches Shocker basketball 
what kind of player he really is. I know he was not happy with his performance last year, and he's off to a really, really good start as well uh, as Wichita State's point guard. How has he impressed you? Yeah, I mean, I see Xavier work out every morning when I'm up working out, um, and the work is showing off. Um, I mean, he puts the work in. We want him to play with confidence, and as you can tell from the games prior that he can – really get to the paint. He can really get to the basket. He can finish around the rim. Um, and we look for him to, you know, show that and exploit teams who have maybe smaller guards. I mean, he's really physical for his size. Um, he just has a knack for getting to the rim. Um, I think that's what's most impressed me, his consistency and just being able to get to his spots wherever he wants and be able to finish around the rim. Um, I mean, as a guard, it's kind of hard to finish amongst the trees down there. But, you know, he does a great job of it. Um, and he just plays with a lot more confidence than he did last year, which is a, a good sight to see. Um, and it's good to have someone, you know, on the perimeter as well that applies pressure on the defense and is able to penetrate, kick, penetrate, and score. So it kind of takes the pressure off everyone else having to, you know, create shots and things like that. So what was it like for you in, in the first game of the season? I think you had 20. Uh, you made a whole bunch of shots in a row. You were pulling up. You were uh, making uh, three-point shots. Uh, pretty much everything was going in for you. Was that a weight off your shoulders after having sat out a year, or was that just you took that as an opportunity to just show what you can do? Uh, well, every game is an opportunity to show what I can do. But I will say that, you know, seeing that first shot go in was kind of a sigh of relief, like, you know, I'm finally here. It's finally, you know, to be present in the moment. Just appreciate, you know, how far I've came um, and kind of get that little rust off and, you know, get used to just being in a flow and back in season mode. Um, so that was good to see that first one go in. And the shots after that, I mean, um, I kind of just found my sweet spot and I kept attacking it and the shots kept going in. My teammates gave me the ball and, you know, just told me to continue to be aggressive. And, you know, that's just what I did. You know, I'm always played the game the right way and play the game to win um so you know i was just getting to my spots and after that first one went in you know it's a good feeling always especially as a shooter so i just wanted to capitalize on it colby rogers our guest shockers have norfolk state at home at the uh coke arena saturday at six o'clock so every team looks for an identity and you try to define an identity and and uh i don't, I don't know what you view this team's identity is through six games, but uh, I would say that uh, you guys are really getting after it uh, rebounding. This team really attacks the glass. Is that kind of an identity to kind of grab onto? Yeah, I think, you know, we're, we're big. We play two bigs to start, um, Quincy and KP. Um, then we have two, you know, athletic six, seven, six, eight guys coming off the bench. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, how Mills tracks things, you know, he tracks how many times we crash the glass. Um, he tracks how many times we box out and, you know, he emphasizes that we can, you know, we can pound teams on the glass and out rebound teams. Um, so I think we've done a great job of that so far. And I think that's one of the things that has become a staple for our team. And, you know, at first in the summer, I didn't really see the vision or expect that, but I see, you know, why he was honest about, crashing the glass and rebounding because we have the size and athleticism to do that. Um, so, yeah, I think rebounding has been a staple for us. You know, you talked about Coach Mills kind of emphasizing pace and freedom. I was just curious what that looks like for you personally and, and how you kind of uh, take that to heart because you had 19 shots in the last game. Obviously, you you made a lot of them. You scored 28. So do you feel like there's there's freedom for you to get your own shot take your shots. How, how, what have those conversations been like about how how the system works for you? Yeah, me and Mills have talked um, several times throughout the year. And, you know, he, he I asked him actually beginning of the season, you know, where I'm going to get my shots from. And he was like, you know, I don't tell players where they get the shots from. You tell me. Um, like I said, he tracks all of our practices and, you know, he looked at the stats and you know, I shot it well in practice, and, you know, he's, he's giving me that confidence to be aggressive in the game, obviously to, you know, no time and score and what's a good shot, what's a bad shot, um, you know, and then just also just to make the right play. But he allows me that freedom to create my shot, and if I see it in a lane to attack it, 
Um, you know, and if if I hit two or three shots in a row, then, you know, he'll allow a heat check and things like that. Um, So, I mean, and we also play with a lot of space, and, you know, he always says good players want space, and so he likes to attack one-on-one matchups. He likes to attack mismatches, so if I get a big on me, you know, he'll look for me to attack those type things. Um, Or if I have a smaller defender on me, look for me to attack those mismatches as well. Um, So, I mean, it's obviously – within the frame and structure of the game and how the game is going. But, you know, he allows us to play with confidence and um, to be aggressive. You know, he he wants us to always err on the side of aggression. So I don't think being hesitant is something that he wants and it's better if we're aggressive. So that's just what I use and that's what the mindset I go into every game with. And, you know, he also knows that I put a lot of time in the gym. So, you know, to just have confidence in that work. Colby Rogers with us. Before we let you go on today, you, and you went on, you had one of those runs in the second half the other night against St. Louis where you made a bunch of shots and kind of put that game away. So I know that uh, a player of your ilk and your ability is probably never satisfied. Uh, so as you look at these first six games of your performance, what aren't you satisfied with, Colby? Um, I would say, you know, teams that have gotten physical with me and, you know, try to get up under me, um, I felt like I kind of settled sometimes for long jumpers. Um, And also I've kind of, you know, when I got into the lane, kind of dribbled one too many times and, you know, that resulted in turnovers. And I think I have to focus on, you know, staying in attack mode, but also just taking what the defense gives me. And, you know, I'm kind of a perfectionist, so I like to try to find a perfect solution to, you know, how a player is guarding me instead of just, you know, they're giving me the right side, take the right side. Don't try to force them to go one way or the other. Or if you draw to people, just kick it out, you know. Um, and also just making sure I kind of move more on offense and don't get stagnant, you know, don't just stand in the corner or on the wing, you know, cut player screens, back screens, um, goal screens, things like that to kind of get the defense moving so it's easier to for me to attack um, when the defense is moving, when they're closing out instead of a set defense all the time. Um, you know, and I trust the shots are going to eventually fall as they did with St. Louis. Um, so the first couple of games where I made that shot at well from three, I didn't get discouraged. But to also be mindful of, you know, we want to shoot, you know, good threes, not tough threes, things like that. So, I mean, just, you know, shot, shot selection, um, just being, you know, a little more decisive, more quick with the ball and making sure that I make the right plays. Well, we really appreciate you coming on the show. Are you still pursuing that degree in inter- integrated marketing? Are you are you still doing a podcast? Does the media world still kind of have a uh, – uh, uh, do you still have an interest in that? Yeah, um, I actually was just talking with, you know, some people that helped me create the podcast earlier today about some ideas and stuff like that. Um, it's just, you know, I've been locked in on a season, been kind of busy, so it's kind of hard for me to find time to, you know, work on the pod and stuff like that. But, yes, the pod is still definitely something that I want to continue to work on and continue to do. It's just, you know, taking longer than I expected to release the next episode. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for your time. Best of luck the rest of the way. It's uh, been fun watching these first six games, and uh, we look forward to many more with you in a Shocker uniform. Thank you, Colby. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks. All right. Uh, Colby Rogers. Can't express how impressed I am with him. We, uh, these are been on now a couple of times. And uh, not we only on, we had him on before. You weren't even here when me and Duda. Well, that uh, had to be not as good. But uh, no, it was awesome. Well, I, I'm sure you do, Duda. What do you like to eat? Uh, well, uh, well, eh? And uh, the, you know, nobody's interested in that. They're not. No. No, we had a good conversation. What Duda ask him? I don't know. It was, it was after. Uh, I better be nice to Duda. It was after he transferred here, so it was well over a year ago. He's supposed to bring over some Snickers salad tomorrow. Snickers salad. Yeah. What even is that? Ah, uh, wait till you. Can it be Milky Way salad? Do we need the peanuts in yeah, there? Yeah, we got to have the Snickers salad. Ugh. But that's actually his wife. So we'll see if he actually comes through on that. I don't know. Well, I hope so. Is there ice cream in it? It's got vanilla pudding, uh, apples, mm. and and frozen Snickers. Okay. I just can't tell you how how excited I am about it. You sound pretty excited. Well, I am excited. Yeah. No doubt. 
You don't like apples. Apples are fine. I don't know if I need them in my Snickers. Well, listen, you take what you get. Uh, We'll take a break because coming up next we have a game. We'll get to that in a moment. The Bob and Jeff Show, KFH. I'm Snoop Dogg, and I'm giving up smoke. I know what you're thinking. Snoop, smoke is kind of your whole thing. But I'm done with it. I'm done with the coughing and my clothes smelling all funky. I'm going smokeless. Solo stove, fix five. They took out the smoke. Now you can have a nice blaze without any clouds ruining your day. Go smokeless. Go to solostove.com. Tell them Big Snoop Dogg sent you. <laughs> KFH. It is Max. It is time to play the game here on KFH Radio. Uh, What is the game today? Well, I'm going to start with this bit of trivia and see if you can ultimately think of it as we go through the course of this game. Uh, But there's only one current Major League Baseball, NBA, or NFL coach or manager who played his entire career for one team. And I want you to think about that. I'm going to give you... Well, why would I... Now you got me thinking about that. Well, you don't have to. We're going to get you... Now you've distracted me. Who played his entire career for one team. Yeah. Well, now I'm going to have to... But the game is... I'm going to give you... We'll start with baseball and see how much time we have. I'm going to give you the current manager first... And you're going to tell me which team he played the most games for. Listen, I'll dominate that. All right. Good. I'm glad. We'll start with Alex Cora. Alex Cora played most of his career. um, (laughs) Really? Well, I don't With the Red Sox. Come on. No. He played the most games with the Los Angeles Dodgers. That's right. I barely remember him as a player, frankly. Really? Wasn't a very good player. He was not bad. He's okay. Had, had nothing, s- nothing, nothing, nothing to speak of. I want to say he had time with the Guardians. At the time, I don't know if he did or not. Pretty sure he did. Next, uh, AJ Hinch. AJ Hinch played most of his career. Gosh darn it. I have a little bit of a issue with memory. <laughs> A.J. Hinch I've... played most of his career uh, with the National League team, right? Nope. No, that's right. That's right. It's an American League yeah, team. That's what you meant. Uh, it was in the Western uh, Division. Okay. And it was with the, uh, gosh, that's a tough one. Mm. I think it was the Houston. No, I think it was Seattle. Nope, it was Oakland. Gosh, the Athletics. I, mean, I thought you do. I thought you'd get both of those. Next, so I don't know what what's going on. Aaron Boone. <laughs> uh, Aaron Boone had to be mostly for the Yankees, wasn't he? No. Uh, Aaron Boone. Played one year with the Yankees. Aaron Boone. Not Brett Boone, who was with the Reds. Not Brett Boone. Uh, Aaron Boone. Who was Most of his Reds. career with the Padres. Nope. That was the Cincinnati Reds, my friend. I should have known that. I, did, I knew he played for the Reds, but I didn't think he played there that long. Played there quite a bit. Most well, of his career. Don't act like you'd have known it. I think I would have got it. Next. Mark Kotze. Mark Kotze played most of his career with the Angels. God, I don't think he ever even played for the Angels. What happened to you? <laughs> this is alarming. Mark Kotze played most of his career with the Padres. Yes, that's correct. Thank goodness. You're starting to really worry me. Scott Service. Scott Service uh, was a serviceable catcher. 
uh, and played probably the bulk of his career with the Milwaukee Brewers. I don't again. I don't think he played for the Brewers. Cubs. Yes. Kevin Cash. Have no idea. Didn't even know. Uh, Kevin Cash played in Toronto. Yeah, he did, but he played more games by one with the Red Sox. An indistinguishable career. Yeah, pretty much, but, you know, he had some moments. Tori Lavolo. Tori Lavolo played with the Brewers. <laughs> no. The Angels. I mean, these are guys that didn't do anything in the big league. Craig Council. Craig Council? Uh, of course. Craig Council. Uh, played much of his career. Council, Craig Council. Uh, I've got it down to. Boy, that's a tough one. Won a couple world titles. Did he? Yeah. Craig Council. He did. Uh, played most of his career with. Well, I. I have no idea. The Dodgers. No, the Milwaukee Brewers. He won world titles with the Milwaukee no, Brewers? No, he won one with Florida and he won one with Arizona, but he played the most games with the Mil I knew he Milwaukee played. Uh, okay, next. Brewers. David Bell. When are we going to another, another uh, sport? Yeah, another sport. Well, we'll do baseball. These first. guys, what's this, what this shows you is that if you're a, a below average major league baseball player, you got a chance to become a manager. Well, it kind of works the same way. Cuz none of these guys are any good. It kind of worked the same way of football and basketball, although there's a couple in there. David Bell, I'll David say Bell. Texas. Phillies. Don't think he played for Texas. <laughs> <laughs> Next, Bud Black, uh the Royals. Yes. Next, Dave Roberts. Dave Roberts. Uh, Houston. Don't think he played for Houston. <laughs> the Dodgers. <laughs> Bob Melvin. Don't care. The uh, uh, the Giant. Yes. And finally, uh, Davey Martinez. Davey Martinez. Uh, gosh darn it. I remember I'm him as a player. Theme here. Huh? Kind of following a theme here. Bob Melvin. Mean? What do you mean? Bob Melvin, he played with the Giants. Giants. Coached with the Giants, managed Dave Roberts, Dodgers, Davey Martinez, the Dodgers. The Nationals. Next. Yeah, Expos, but whatever. Uh, we'll go to the NBA. You're not going to get any of these, but we'll give it a shot. You'll get one, maybe two. Jacques Vaughn. Atlanta. No. Brooklyn. Uh-uh. Uh, who? Coaches Brooklyn. He played his most games. Do you know who he started his career with? Can't remember. The Jazz. Didn't know that. I don't think I did either. Uh, Jason Kidd. Jason Kidd played most of his games in Dallas. Mm. He played more games with somebody else. Um, Sacramento. <laughs> who? The Nets. No, he didn't. Yeah, he did. Monty Williams, you know. Don't care. Magic. Steve Kerr. Well, he played for everyone. Who did he play the most? The Bulls. With? Yes. Tyron Lou. Lakers. Don't care. <laughs> Hawks. Darvin Ham. Don't care. The Bucks. Adrian Griffin. Uh, I'll say the Celtics. I don't, did he ever? Yes. No. Bulls. No. Who? Mavericks. And finally, Chauncey Billups. Uh, Chauncey Billups played his most game with the Nuggets. Come on. <laughs> Who? Pistons. Oh, yeah. And I'm not into this game. And here's football, which you have zero chance. I'm not into this. Yeah, I know, because you're bad at it. Go. D'Amico Ryans. Don't, don't have no clue. Well, who's he coach? Uh, the, the Texans. Okay. Who did he uh, play the most games with? The Oilers. The Texans. He's not that old. Good <laughs> grief. Got a guy being 70 over there. Uh, Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson played most of his career in Tampa Bay. <laughs> what? What? Yeah. He's very famously a backup for one guy. Who? 
Brett Favre. Oh, yeah, Green Bay. And he played some with the Eagles. He actually was in more games for the Eagles, but whatever. Antonio Pierce? Uh, Ravens. Nope. Eagles. Nope. You're in, you're in the right division. Who? You're in the right division. Cowboys. Giants. Giants. Come on. Jeff, Mike. Get a better game next time. This is time. a good game. I enjoyed this no, game. No, it's an awful game. Mike Vrabel. Mike Vrabel, Patriots. Yeah. Frank Reich. Frank Reich. Colts. No. Buffalo. Yes. Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell. Atlanta. No, the Giants. Todd Bowles. Todd Bowles. The Jets. Washington. <laughs> and finally, the only current coach or manager in the big three who played his entire career for one team. I've narrowed it down. What do you mean you narrowed it down? Um, it's obviously football. Well, let, let me look. Um, it wouldn't. I don't know who this guy, who they played for. I don't yeah, know how. Do. how yeah, the, you do. I don't know how in the world I'm going to discern that. You will. Um, and I, Sean Payton played like two games. I'm talking about a, a career. I'm going. Well, a lot of them didn't play in the NFL. Well, one or uh, two of them did and had a long career with one team. I'm gonna I'm gonna say who's the Saints coach? I don't know. Uh, Dennis Allen, I think. I'm gonna say it's uh, uh, th there's so many that didn't even play in the NFL. Okay, we'll find ones who did. The Jets coach, Mike Robert Sala. Robert Sala, no. Who is it? It's the Washington Commanders coach, Ron Rivera. Oh, he did play a while. He played a long time with the Chicago Bears. Of course he did. I mean, I, who who cares? Won a, won a Super Bowl. I like Ron Rivera. I wish he had a little bit better team, although the Bears are improving. Is it his fault maybe, though? No, the Bears are improving. It seems like it. They lost, I mean, uh, they lost a the heartbreaker to Detroit. They're getting better. And uh, what, I, what I've said all year about the NFL having a bunch of uh, – not very good teams, uh, and players was confirmed today by Tom Brady. Tom Brady thinks that also. Yeah. So there's a lot of mediocrity. Well, I think everyone who watches And even football. if you watched the game last night between the Chiefs and Eagles, uh, maybe the two best teams in the NFL, you saw some of that mediocrity. Uh, yeah, there's not now, a lot of greatness going the around. The weather wasn't great. Um, but... The Chiefs, man, they got to catch the football. Do you know they've I, – I, I read this stat earlier. 22% of Patrick Mahomes' throws have been dropped. It's crazy. 22%. Yeah, that's awful. Have gone off the hands of receivers. And uh, as good as Travis Kelsey is, he had a big fumble in that game. Uh, that really did a lot of damage to the Chiefs. They just didn't have it last night. A lot of it, mistakes. It's not. It's three games in a row now. The Chiefs have not scored a point in the second half. That's pretty alarming. And there's a lot of people out there. Well, the Chiefs are fine, and yeah, mostly they are. But there's some They're cause. Fine if they don't play anybody concern. good. Uh, but when they play somebody good, as you tend to do in the playoffs, you better step it up. Uh, because right now, I don't There's know. so many pretenders, the, though. The problem is, you could say this about every team. Right. No one looks like a real threat. Nobody Baltimore, looks. Baltimore, maybe. No, I'm not. I think Philadelphia is the more. I'm talking about in the AFC. Maybe Baltimore. Maybe. Uh, but they have their own issues at times. Everybody does. Philly Nick is with us. He's waiting. Hey, Nick. Hello, Bob. How are you doing today? We're doing okay. Doing okay. So let's talk about that game last night. I'm happy to hear your thoughts. So it's obvious the Eagles are struggling as a team in a whole. But there is no doubt in my mind and across the NFL nation that the Philadelphia Eagles are the all-around best situational team when it comes down to it. 
Well, I don't know about NFL Nation buying into that. Obviously, the Eagles are a very f- good football team. They were in the Super Bowl last year. They have a, an outstanding defense. Uh, they have some weaponry on offense. Jalen Hurts uh, was not that impressive last night, although he made a couple big-time throws, and his receivers actually caught the ball, which is uh, different Correct. than what happened for the most part with the Chiefs. Correct. And I'm going to go on the air now and say the only team we really need to worry about in the NFC to get back to the Super Bowl this year is the San Francisco 49ers. Well, you better, you with, better worry about them quite often. Yes, they're, they're my pick with, to get to the Super Bowl. With that said, I'm going out on the limb, and I'm going Philadelphia and Baltimore Ravens in the Super Bowl. I don't that that's that's a pretty sturdy limb. I would yeah. agree, yeah. Yeah, that there's that could very easily happen, Nick. Yes. So what do you think the Chiefs need to do to improve offensively to catch, become one of catch the football. That's pretty much it. That's what they need to do. They need to catch the football. And uh and don't turn it over. And Watson can't be their number one guy. He got 10 targets last night, and he's not a good enough receiver to be getting 10 targets. So as I was watching the game last night, I noticed between last year and this year, Mahomes is not looking the same. Do you agree? Well, he doesn't have any deep threats. The guy, he, I mean, I don't think this is on Mahomes, Nick. He, you, you are aware of all the balls the Chiefs receivers are dropping, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. But I just wanted to make sure. The, but at the same time, you know, he has been known in the past to be that guy to make them plays. And he's overthrowing his receivers. I, he's they're under- not his plays, them. Nick. Nick, you said you just understood that the receivers aren't catching the ball. How is that on Mahomes? Because in the past, as I just stated, he has been able to overcome those situations. He, they didn't have receivers dropping balls like this. So, do you think Thank the you, Chiefs Nick. are going to the Super Bowl? Thank you. I wouldn't be su- I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Chiefs are in the Super Bowl. No, he left. And anybody who would be surprised uh, hasn't been paying attention. Uh, I wouldn't. I don't know that I would deem them to be the favorite right now, although. Give me a real give me a team that's more of a favorite out of the AFC. Maybe Baltimore. I mean, you can make a case. Who else? Miami, the Chiefs beat Miami. Uh Jacksonville, the Chiefs beat Jacksonville. Uh Cleveland, come on. Buffalo? Mm, I don't I don't see it. The NFL, I don't know, see they, it. There's, uh, they're all very flawed and not great. Houston's what, not ready. They now a year from now, we might be talking. Uh, the Texans are going to go to the playoffs, and they they have such a weak remaining schedule, as we said on the show last week. They're going to be a high seed. I think the Texans the are, are a threat. I don't think so. I do. I don't think they can beat the good teams. I do. Well, you're wrong because they're they're not that much better. I mean, Buffalo's not much. I wouldn't I wouldn't even say that Buffalo is demonstrably better than the Texans. The Texans have a very favorable schedule. They do have Jacksonville this week, followed by the Broncos, who are improving. Jets, Titans, Browns, Titans, Colts. That's it. Yeah. They could. They're six and four. Uh, they could be twelve and uh, five. Very easily. It's not, not out of the realm. And I think C.J. Stroud has a lot for people. But if you're wanting me to say the Chiefs are done, I can't. Uh, I'm not doing Nobody's that. Nobody's done. I'm not doing that. Cleveland's not done. The, they're done. No, they're not. They don't have a quarterback. Yeah. But they're 7-3. and three. The Chiefs will win the rest of their game. <laughs> okay. What are you, uh, ha, 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 in the I don't back? know. Just... I mean, what if they don't even win the division? They're seven and three. They go to Las Vegas next week. Then they go to Green Bay. Then they have the Bills at home, at New England, 
Raiders at home, Bengals at home, at the Chargers. How many of those games you got them losing? One or two at the most. Two. If they lose two, I'll buy you a house. Well, they could lose to Buffalo. They could go to Green Bay and lose. I mean, Green Bay's not terrible. If they, if, if, if they lose two of those games, I'll buy you a house. Okay, deal. We'll go house shopping. I don't need much, you know. You are happy with uh, whatever you have. Uh, me, on the other hand, I, w- I want it to be, I had a guy look at our uh, kitchen today. Yeah, I heard. For a kitchen remodel. What, you told what, are, me. You, what are your thoughts? I don't know. You're going to weigh in anyway. <laughs> Just, I can't wait till dude is here tomorrow. I want to talk just, to him about. Just it. love all these improvements you're making at the uh, expense of my future, but whatever. Your inheritance. <laughs> yeah. Well, when we sell this house, you're going to leave somebody a great kitchen. Uh, Link Forty Two will get a good inheritance from it. Well, that's good. Don't you see? I'm happy. I'm going to leave everything to League Forty Two. I'd be negligent not to do that. I hope you do. Well, good for you. Do whatever you want to do. It's your and, money. And by everything, I mean 50 bucks that I got in my piggy bank. It's your money. I just want well, you to, that, it, it is my I just money. want you to exit this earth in 35 years, the happiest well, possible. Well, I, I hope I make it 35 more years. Or do, do I? Do you want to be 103? I enjoy uh, being here with my wife and my dog. There's no question about it. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And uh, as I often talk to my wife about, Misty, our dog, will be 11 in February. And uh, I want her to live forever. Yeah, it I don't starts know, getting stressful, doesn't it? I don't know what I'll do without her. A couple of my cats are 14. I hate it. I don't like thinking about it. No, nah, it's terrible. But, but they're this in dog, good health. This dog has brought me uh, more joy than you can even imagine. Because she's just incredible. And all dogs are. I, I mean, I, I presume all dogs are, except the one that lives near us that barks at Misty. Oh, that's too bad. I don't like that. He probably wants, you know, to hang out. Yeah, I don't like that. Barks in a ferocious way. You know? That's too bad. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, All right, we've had a lot on the show today. Omari Elias from Cape and Mount Carmel, Wichita State Athletic Director Kevin Saul, Uh, Colby Rogers, Shocker Guard. We played a game. Tomorrow on the show, comedian Joe Gatto will join us, and Jason Duda will be here for the three-man booth. We hope you'll be listening. Our final show before a couple days off for the Thanksgiving break. Max Power back in the studio. Have a good night. We'll see you soon.